Today we have a very special guest with us, Glenn Kessler, President, HCD Market Research, Flemington, New Jersey. HCD, you do a lot of standard market research, but what really caught my eye was your experience in neuromarketing. Tell us a little bit about neuromarketing and where you see it's heading. So uh, people call neuromarketing something that other people call applied neuroscience. And so uh, we usually refer to it as applied neuroscience, meaning we'll take any neuroscience methodology that's appropriate to solve a problem and we'll use it and almost always integrate it with traditional market research. Traditional market research tells you how people say they feel. Using neuroscience, you can measure their inner response, usually things that they can't articulate. And I think that um, the future, as it gets less expensive to do, uh, it's going to be required. Mm -hmm. I, I actually think that at some point where the price gets low enough, it would be malpractice if you're a brand manager not to know the subconscious response that somebody has to your product. But I kind of look at, and I've known you for 40 years, we went to graduate school together, we were study buddies, that you're climbing into my brain. I have emotional issues with people climbing into my brain. Do you find that in your industry or your well, clients? I think that it will, that will always be a concern. Um, in the 70s, uh, there was a concern about messages being whispered on the speakers in a grocery store. And it was buy this or buy that. And it was the same concern. Um, I believe that um, at least in most places, the benefits will outweigh the concerns. And the benefits are, would you rather buy a product that tasted optimal, mm -hmm. that had the best tactile feel, aroma, um, and that's a result of people sampling product uh, while they're being measured for it, neuro, with neuroscience tools, or would you rather not? And I think that people want optimal products and uh, technology is always changing. And while people were arguing in the 70s about subliminal advertising, mm -hmm. um, today they're arguing about this, but they're not complaining about the products that result. So what you're saying is the neuromarketing really supports the market research to double check to see whether or not the facts are the facts. It's more telling you why people said what they do. Often you ask people how they felt about an experience and they can't tell you why they said what they did. But using neuroscience, you can look step by step in their product experience and measure what worked and what didn't. And often what didn't will uh, give information as to why they had a negative experience and something that worked often tells you why they said it was positive. Right. You've been doing this for numerous years in market research. We have marketing students. What advice would you give them being a market marketing student coming out of school or with some experience? to deal with market research today? Well, it's turning into an eclectic kind of experience. So there's traditional market research where you ask people questions and they give you cognitive responses. There's neuroscience where we're measuring the subconscious and there's psychological testing, which tells you something else that supplements the other two. So having an understanding, not how it works, but when to use it um, is appropriate. I, could, I believe that in the future, people aren't going to uh, hire somebody who is only an expert in one sliver of market research. They want to know what tool to use when, because all that people care about is getting the right answer. And if you can get the right answer using two of the tools, you do it. One, you do it. But often, we have to measure 
not only what people say, but why they said it. And that's why these tools are valuable. And where do you uh, hope that market research ends up ultimately. Are we going to be hooked up as consumers or being tracked all the time? There's some privacy issues. Uh, I think uh, it would be analogous to how Nielsen gets their ratings. They have homes where they have meters and they know what people are watching when. Mm -hmm. uh, these, uh, even now, the sensors are, not obtru are inobtrusive and so they, um, don't cause any negative sensual feeling or whatever. And so if you were compensated, like Nielsen compensates their Nielsen homes, um, to live your life as you did with a sensor that doesn't cause any discomfort at all, and you're compensated, uh, I think that it will, I, we know it'll give valuable information, and it's very likely that there's a segment of consumers who are open to it. Well, it sounds no different than what we have now with cell phones. Wherever we go, it's pretty much being tracked in the same way. Wouldn't you agree? It, absolutely. And it's probable that the cell phone will be the an integral part of the sensors. It's probable that these sensors will just be sending information to the cell phone, which will then will be sent someplace else. The idea is everyone's anonymous, mm -hmm. but they're the group that represents a target market is likely to give information that's really valuable. Very interesting subject. Thank you so much for coming. You're welcome, it was fun.